Okay, we're back with you here on Gridiron for the Red Hurricane Report. Larry Kelly, the floor is yours. Well, uh, again, uh, not an unexpected result against Montour. Uh, they got beat 51 0. Uh, Montour put up 507 total yards, and the Hurricane picked up 104. Uh, we're playing young guys. But as I said last week, and I will say again this week, and it's a line that I heard for the first time from Chuck Tanner. Chuck Tanner was a great manager, a brilliant man, should be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. And uh, I covered a series when they played the Philadelphia Phillies in August of 1978. And uh, they had just gotten beaten and it was the middle of August and they were nine and a half games out of first place. And that's back when they only took one team and there was no wild card. And in the, uh, you know, Chuck used to do his uh, media obligations uh, inside his office. And one of the media uh, personnel said, Chuck, is the season over? You're nine and a half games out. And I think the date was August the 10th. And he looked at him with a straight face and he said, you know, what often looks like the end is really only the beginning. And as you might recall, and maybe you don't, you're too young, the Pirates made up that nine and a half games and had a chance to win the, the Eastern Conference, as it was known at the time, the Eastern Division. Uh, they beat the Philadelphia Phillies in a doubleheader on Friday night. And on Saturday, uh, I was covering the game. They were one game out. So they closed the gap. And, and he was right. They went on a heck of a run. So the point I'm trying to make is this. This looks like the end for Newcastle football. I mean, they've been getting outscored uh, by numbers that you don't see in junior high football games. You don't see mismatches like this. But maybe it's only the beginning of something great that could happen. And, you know... If we look back in history, and we did just before we did this segment, we noticed that in 1995, Newcastle finished the season 0 and 10. And three years later, in 1998, they won the Whippeal Championship by beating North Allegheny in the highest division that the Whippeal had at that time. And so it could be done. Newcastle's playing young guys, it's a new coaching staff. Uh, it takes time to develop a culture. It takes time to develop young players. Sophomores and freshmen don't beat juniors and seniors, not in the competition that Newcastle's playing against. But don't, don't throw your hands up in the air and say it's over for Newcastle football. It could never change. Because indeed, if history repeats itself, it could change. And it could change in the next few years. And uh, I'm a red hurricane through and through. I'll never give up hope. I'll never give up belief. I know some of the young men on this team. I've coached them up. They're tough guys. They're smart kids. They're mentally tough. They're physically tough. So uh, even though it looks pretty bleak right now, uh, I haven't given up hope. And history tells us one thing. It can change, and it can change quickly. Yeah. There's my hurricane report. Obviously, Larry, uh, injuries are part of sports. You know, that's, that's an unfortunate thing. Doesn't matter if you're talking football, basketball, baseball, uh, what have you. And, and naturally, you know, Newcastle's been hit pretty hard with with injuries this year. Kayvon Gardner, Tyler Leakins, uh, Robert Reed, Naeem Rogers. Uh, the list goes on. Uh, they've had plenty of plenty of injuries, and, and they're key guys. It's not just guys that are fill-ins, guys that are second teamers or third teamers. You know, what have you. I mean, we're talking key components of this team. How much different would this season be, uh, Larry, if Newcastle could, could play it with, with a full complement of guys, no injuries, uh, who they planned on playing, you know, the, the kids they planned on running out there snap to snap? You, know, you would hope it would be different, but, you know, these scores are such lopsided scores that, you know, it might not be significantly different. Not at this stage, not when, you know, Kayvon Gardner's in 10th grade. I think Tyrell Lincoln is a 10th grader. The quarterback, Tyrell Harris, Tyrell Harris is a 10th grader. Uh, it takes time. They're not even men yet, you know, and they're playing against men. So 
I'm not so sure the results would have been significantly different, but I could tell you, you know, people say all the time, well, you know, in basketball, you guys still win championships. Well, in basketball, you know, you only need six or seven players. In football, you need 26 or 27 because of the fact that you cannot go through an entire season without injuries. You know it's going to happen. You have to have depth. It's a different game. And, uh, you know, it certainly didn't help, especially when, you know, you're already playing young players. Probably the substitutes are even younger and even less experienced than the guys that were hurt. And I just, like I told you, I don't know that there's any substitute for Kayvon Gardner. He's one of the best athletes in the school, bar none. So mm-hmm. if he's not in the game, it's a major, major loss uh, for the team on both sides of the ball. And then I think Braylon Sibley also uh, left last week's game against Montour with an injury. So you're talking Gardner would be your number one running back. I think he came back, but I'm not sure if he played last week. I can't remember offhand. And then Sibley would probably be your third teamer. And if he's out, I can't remember who the second uh, second string guy is. Maybe Tyler Leakins has been running the ball at times too. And, and uh, you know, like I say, he hobbled, he hobbled off the field. Uh, I want to say it was maybe the Armstrong game uh, toward the end of it, uh, favoring his right, uh, his left foot. So I can't remember if he played last week. I mean, you're, you're talking, you could be down to your fourth team running back on Friday night. And that's just unheard of whether you have 60 some kids or 20 some for, for a team. Absolutely. And these same young men also play defense. So yeah. you're losing them on both sides of the ball. And, you know, I always say you get the right guys blocking, you and I can run the ball, but you and I aren't going to be back there defending passes and, and, and playing defense. You know, Montour threw for 300 passing yards last week. So if you got young guys back there, not only physically are they at a disadvantage from an experience standpoint, you know, there could be coverage lapses and breakdowns because they don't have the experience of game action Mm -hmm. so yeah it's uh you know injuries play a major role in any football season that's why you need a lot of depth and uh if you're playing young guys and got to go to even younger men it's going to be problematic it's not going to end up in good results there's one thing i learned growing up around here people should look out for each other be friends and neighbors that you can count on. So it bothers me when people who are hurt in automobile accidents get bullied by the insurance company. I don't let bullies run over my clients. I do what I was taught growing up. Step up, stand up, and speak up for those who can. I'm Larry Kelly, and I'm a Newcastle guy. 